classical appoggio philosophy. Today's lesson, folks, is about classical appoggio philosophy or philosophy of a classical appoggio. Appoggio. Four main principles of appoggio can be put here in four statement. Number one, singing with one register called chiaroscuro within two octaves of range. Number two, singing with crispy diction and clear recognizable vowels. Number three, using support, appoggio, as a mean tool for all vocal manipulations including diction. Number four, singing with unforced and yet a very projective voice. Appoggio. I said many times before that stable larynx position is needed to provide chiaroscuro or one timbre singing to provide continuous connection of a chest and head zones of a resonance. Opposite to one timbre singing is a singing with registers, usually two or three, depending on a school of thought. They divide it into chest, passaggio, head. Those schools I called placement schools. These schools are relatively effective in very small lyric voices, among them light coloratura, tenora di grazia, or very light tenor, or non-classical approaches as pop, a rock singing. We cannot separate support and placement. They complement each other in this case. We have to look at appoggio technique as a one monolith sound technique and not as dualistic one. In real appoggio there is no separate chest or a head voice mysteriously combined in one. There is only one register called chiaro scuro. Remember that this approach is not a discovery of the 21st century or my personal discovery. This approach dominated great singers like Enrico Caruso, Lily Lemon, Beniamino Gili, Juicy Berling, Jerome Hines, all those magnificent singers who practically used appoggio as a tool technique. School of placement or school of placements in a strange way comes from one timbre appoggio singer advocate. Lily Lemon. She always insisted on one timbre approach and yet by creating so-called chart of personal sensations universal for all the sopranos, tenors or baritones, she created a pseudoscience rather than an objective look at what really happens. Subjective will be always somewhat different than objective and in good appoggio school teacher insists on creating personal side of sensation, unique for every individual singer. In fact, no teacher in the world has ability to create this pseudo chart for his student. He has to insist that his student pays attention to his own sensations and when producing a sound with teacher's approval remembers it in his body and resonance sensations. For those who want to learn appoggio, I strongly recommend to abandon all the placement terminology. Chest voice, passaggio, or head, come to chiaroscuro, one timbre philosophy of singing or appoggio. And of course, you can use more of an appoggio type of terms like passaggio zone, head zone, not saying passaggio register chest register, head register, just saying passaggio zone, head zone, chest zone. Appoggio. You may ask, what's the big difference between head zone and head voice? Appoggio. They look and sound almost synonymous, aren't they? I'd say those distinctions may be subtle but necessary because zone 
simply means where are you singing and implications on head voice move you towards some timbre change, register change. In my old videos, even I sometimes use terms like passaggio or chest voice because they are more familiar to an ordinary voice students. But those terms, if not explained well, can be hazardous to your vocal brain, first of all, and eventually to your vocal sound. Lowest note of a chiaroscuro range will be your main positioning of the larynx from where you have to build your appoggio foundation. In more practical appoggio, we choose the lowest note of the phrase. We sing in one legato movement, so we choose the lowest note, not necessarily lowest note of, the, of your whole range, but the lowest note of the phrase you're singing. That is practical appoggio. And the question comes to mind, why the lowest and not the highest one? Because the low notes produce overtones or tones that are higher than the bass note and the high notes cannot produce lower overtones, lower overtones or to be more correct downtones since they don't have them in their nature. Very important to understand chiaroscuro tone. Well, every tone has dark, bass and bright overtones qualities, even falsetto. But chiaroscuro tone is a special blend of two strong vocal formantas or formants called low vocal formant and high vocal formant. According to acousticians, only classical voice has not only overtones but formants that make this instrument the richest of all known acoustic instruments. The formanta, so called responsible for the projection, is high vocal formant or high vocal formanta, around 2800 or 3400 hertz is a high vocal formant that occurs only in trained voices and greatly responsible for projection. We have to realize that formants are not separate voices, chest and head, blending together in harmonious duet called chiaroscuro. No. Chiaroscuro is a monolith sound, like chest or head voices. And we have to remember that singer cannot achieve a connection between his head voice by reinforcing it to his chest. well-connected high note sounds totally different from reinforced head falsetto sound. Reinforced head falsetto sound is a head voice and it will never become chiaroscuro voice. On the contrary, chest falsetto can be reinforced to a chiaroscuro sound. Here we have a common misunderstanding of registers. Falsetto, in general, is a breezy voice production when vocal folds have no total closure and vibrate openly. Falsetto can be chesty one or head falsetto. Most of singers associate falsetto with only the high voice, which is incorrect. So they hear one teacher said, Reinforce your falsetto and you can get chiaroscuro, which is correct, only to chest falsetto. So it works like a broken telephone line. Little knowledge is a dangerous thing, remember that. I repeat, to think that one can reinforce head falsetto sound to chiaroscuro sound is naive and ignorant. To know why, one has to understand the nature of acoustic sound. I repeat again. Sound can only form overtones, meaning that the higher tones come from the lowest one. 
Remember that registers like chest or head are separated by different position of the larynx. So it's not just the sound itself. It has a certain physical, mechanical position. Low larynx supports low chesty sounds. And higher larynx takes care of higher frequency resonances. And logically, only the low position of the larynx can support both, according to the resonant theory. Not all the chesty voices are chiaroscuro voices, even though all low tones have the highest overtones, as I said before. We can call chiaroscuro a unique and only one classical appoggio register, which is not a simple blend of chest and head voices, as you already know. When Lily Lemon was explaining one register singing as voice is a register, she naturally meant chiaroscuro voice. Of course, she was an opera singer. And I have to add up to this that Lily Lemon started to use appoggio, diaphragmic way of support, later in her career. And uh, she absolutely advocates appoggio way of voice support. As a technique, appoggio was used since the beginning of bel canto, but with new vocal challenges as Verdi or later Italian uh, composers, German, French, brought some new demands as how to handle the dramatic and spinto voices in the best way all bel canto singers handled, one tempo way. You see, back to bel canto times, dramatic voices were considered to be special and even ugly ones. Why ugly, you may ask? Well, even now many music lovers consider dramatic voices as non-beautiful. When Verdi wrote his Macbeth, he told his favorite soprano prima donna that he was hiring another soprano because he needed an ugly voice for portraying Lady Macbeth. So he said, I, I don't need bel canto voice to portray such a bloody person. Today, dramatic voices are envied because they are the highest paid jobs in opera and nobody calls them ugly anymore except those who don't like opera sound in general. Sure, dramatic voices face more difficulties with appoggio than higher voices. They need good physical training and health to be able to make it not only big and projective, but beautiful and expressive. As a conclusion, classical appoggio supports one register, unforced projective singing based on breathing technique that uses dynamic support or appoggio as a means to achieving it. To suggest you check out my vocal appoggio dictionary here on YouTube, I suggest you I suggest you to check out my vocal appoggio dictionary here on YouTube on my blog to get away from old confusive vocal terms. I repeat, it's important what you have into in your head. If it's confused, you have to get rid of the confusion. And part of the learning process of getting rid of your confusion is understanding clearly all the terms that you're using in your technique. Thank you very much. There was Franco Tanelli. Until next time. Appoggio.
about you.